Would our growing understanding of evolution make it more likely there's a God behind the process? Time for an Underceptions Instant Expert. Ard Louie is Professor of Theoretical Physics at the University of Oxford in the Department of Physics, of course. His work is showing that evolution is not only less random than we think, but more likely to pick some forms over others. We don't really know why. Ard says evolution is in effect more like a computer program than a bunch of monkeys randomly banging away on a typewriter. And that discovery could have theological implications. So these natural theological arguments are always difficult. Yeah. And there's a good reason why theologians have been suspicious of them. You know, and think of Newman, one of our greatest theologians of the 19th century, Bart, right? So they, they were pretty, they're probably maybe a bit over the top in their pushback against it. Alistair McGrath here in Oxford has been trying to um, revitalize his arguments. And actually, interestingly, um, someone like Richard Dawkins or other atheists of that ilk are also natural theologians. Which, and what I mean is they look at the natural world and they say, this tells us something about who we are or how we should live. So my first pushback to all of that is to say, I'm also somewhat of a skeptic for natural theology. And in the evolutionary story, I can give you two ways of running it. So the one is the radical contingency argument, the idea that you know, if you rerun the tape of life again, something completely different would happen. Um, and the other one is the argu argument that if you rerun the tape of life again, something very similar to what we see would happen. So my scientific arguments are on that second side, not on the first one. But actually, if you're a, Christ a Christian or a theist, you might say, well, the nice thing about that contingency argument is God only has to do a little tweak and he controls the outcome of evolution because everything just can, can hinge on these little... And so you don't have to have God intervening at various times. You can just tweak it and then something like us could happen. And that's really, that's really meaningful if you have a certain views on divine action. On the other hand, if you believe that there's a path to the world and you know, um, the person who actually got me interested in evolution is a Cambridge paleontologist called Simon Colway Morris who talks a lot about convergent evolution. And convergent evolution is completely fascinating. You know, we have a camera eye, so is an octopus, evolved completely independently. So we see the same patterns appearing again and again and again in nature. That suggests that there are deep structures that are channeling us in certain ways. And Simon says something like humans is inevitable. And he says this is much more amenable to theism because if God were to create the world and want there to emerge from that world creatures that would be able to interact with him, then being able to have something like human intelligence appear is a very important part of that. So the idea would be, you know, if, I'll um, take a step even further back, if God created the world, God could cre create the world all in one go. And so I've got Lego blocks here for my kids, I can make them a train and they'll be very pleased. But if I could make Lego blocks that I put into a box and I shake it, and out comes a fully formed train because the patterns, the shaking makes a train, that would be infinitely cooler. I would also be very rich with my toys. Right? <laughs> but the idea is that, um, so that if, and, and if, you, if you believe that life has been, has changed over, to, over our uh, kind of geological history, then that, if you believe that God is behind that, then God is doing something like that shaking of the train. And then it's, it does feel to me like these deep structure arguments suggest that that tells us a little bit how God is creating something like ourselves to make us inevitable. I have to say that those arguments are difficult. Right? So that's why I pushed the other one as well yeah. to show you could run them both yeah. as natural theological arguments. And my first take is always to say, well, um, both to my atheistic friends and to my Christian friends, we should be more cautious about trying to extract meaning about our lives from these biological arguments. There are very really fundamental facts about the way the, the fact that there is an orderly world, a world that's, under, that's intelligible. These, I think, only make sense if you believe there's intelligence behind the world. I think the history of science has had deep theological roots f for those very reasons. So I like to remind myself of that. Um, I also think that part of my calling on Earth at this time is to discover things about the world. So I think those are ways that I feel that my, my faith connects up. And probably it's true that I, um, because of my Christian background, but also because I'm a physicist, am much less likely to believe that evolution is just kind of one damn thing after another. I'm much more likely to believe there, can be, there are going to be beautiful patterns. 
So I don't want to call that a Christian motivation because many, many non-Christians have it. I do think it's, its justification, its origins are much more naturally um, derived in a Christian framework than they are in an atheistic framework. In the atheistic framework, it's surprising that this is true. You could say it's a posteriori, maybe there's some reason for it because it worked, but a priori it seems surprising. If you've enjoyed the chance to become an instant expert, then you'll find much more, plus a bunch of other informative videos over at the Underceptions YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Underceptions. See ya.